Hello everyone, welcome back. I am a bit drier today. Uh, it wouldn't take much, that was pretty horrendous, that last episode. Um, down at Buttermere, beautiful Buttermere. Uh, I was having to think of where, where to come this morning on my little trip through to Keswick to check the shop's not been burgled again. And I realised I've not done anything down here. I've done a few bits on the, on the fells behind me, but nothing down at lake level, so just come down to the shoreline to keep it nice and easy because obviously because of this lockdown period that we're still in even though I can technically go out and shoot I'm staying off the fells for the time being because uh, you know it's it, it doesn't feel right and especially what happened to that poor fella in the mountain rescue the other week so yeah nice and easy lake level stuff this morning I'm just waiting for this water to settle down and uh, just have a, a relaxing chill out session here so I was actually here a couple of days ago and we had some fantastic mist. It was a full on temperature inversion. And I put the drone up for a little bit and it looked absolutely fantastic uh, above the mist. But sad's law, uh, it was one of those occasions where the mist never actually shifted. Uh, it wasn't quite warm enough for it to burn off. And as a result, I'd sort of stood there for about three hours uh, waiting for a little bit of light to get through and uh, it, it just didn't uh, just one of those one of those days i guess but i've come down here this morning to try and salvage that last trip and uh, again i think i'm going to be a little bit frustrated with the conditions but it's still a, a wonderful view looking across the lake here it's uh, certainly a, a classic view for a reason but if things don't pan out here what i'm actually going to do is head over the other side of the lake to the waterfalls these uh, a set of waterfalls sit beneath high crag and high style i always get those three mountains mixed up but i'm pretty sure they're right uh yeah just to try and get a, a bit of an original take on here i've not actually shot those waterfalls before and it's been a, a while since i've been down here to be honest partly because i feel like i've got everything out of the location that i, I kind of wanted to i guess so yeah, I'm going to stick it out here for a little bit and then if things don't pan out, I'm probably going to head over the other side of the lake and see what I can get from there. Yeah, don't think this is going to happen. I've stood around for about an hour and the clouds actually getting thicker and the water is getting more choppy. <laughs> so whilst I'm not a big sort of chaser of reflection shots myself, uh, this scene looking well looking towards the pines behind me it, it really needs calm water so I'm going to pack up here and head over to something that's probably going to be a bit more interesting anyway uh, I will put up a couple of the shots that I got uh, a couple of days ago on the screen because I did actually shoot some stills while I was there even though the conditions were a little frustrating but I was really happy with one of the drone shots All right, so I think we found something a little more interesting. Hopefully you can hear me okay here because shooting towards this waterfall, bit of noise, obviously. Uh, I've not actually been over this side of the lake for at least three or four years. So it's been nice to get out and explore something new today. This particular section of waterfalls behind me, uh, I've seen a couple of shots of this in the past, but not too many, so it's still relatively untouched from photographers i mean there's not many areas around bottom here that hasn't been but uh, but it's nice to come and shoot a spot that i've not really done before the shot itself i did frame one up 
in landscape format, but what I was finding was that the lake in the bottom left, there was an awful lot of empty space there and it was sort of pulling your eye away from the waterfall. So I framed it up in portrait. We've got this lovely sort of curve that goes round from right to left and then sort of snakes its way down to a couple of little trees. The one thing I didn't want to do was cut them trees off, so I've just given them a little bit of space to the left there and then we've got fleet with pike in the distance uh, as a really lovely backdrop. In terms of sort of settings, I'm, I've played around a little bit with shutter speeds to just try and get the right uh, sort of motion in the water. I don't want the exposure to go on too long. So the sweet spot here is around about a third of a second, a quarter of a second, something like that. I've got the polarizer on just to darken down the water in the distance there. I'm not too concerned actually with taking some of the sheen off the wet rocks because in this situation, if you put it on full polarization, you actually sort of lose some of the textures a little bit. So I'm, I've only got the polarizer turned halfway for the, for the foreground here. As I say, the cloud is still not really sort of playing ball. We're not really gonna probably get any light here today, but as I say, it's not the worst thing. And it's a good one to frame up and put in the memory bank for probably autumn when I come back here and shoot it again. I'll put this one on the screen. I think this one works pretty well. I have picked out another composition facing back up the fell side, which I'm gonna talk you through in a moment. Right, I've uh, just got to be a little bit careful here where I put my feet because it's quite steep here. Uh, yeah, I mentioned I've got one more shot and uh, I'm a bit 50-50 this will work to be honest, but I'm shooting the same section of waterfalls just a little bit further down. The problem I've had here is because I'm stood on such a steep slope, the shot I'm going for, it's been a bit of a tricky one to get the crag in the background part of the shot because the sort of higher up the fell you go you lose the waterfall but then the lower down the fell you go you lose the crag so i think i found a reasonable composition here i can probably i can see this being more of a more of a five four four three sort of crop it won't be the the full three by two frame anyway it'll have to sort of lose a bit of the left and right hand sides because there's a bit of dead space there but yeah i mean it's it's quite a nice shot this i'm a bit of a sucker for sort of earthy tones in overcast conditions which is what we've got today but this location is definitely one that I'm going to come back to in future because uh, yeah there's loads of potential in in better light I think the images up here will really work but I'll stick this one on the screen uh, it's been a bit of a quick one this one but I uh, hope you enjoyed it keep liking and subscribing and uh, oh just before I go I should mention <laughs> you're probably wondering where the framing video was this week I have one section, one really important section of it, and the bloody audio failed me, so I'm going to have to go back and just film that one little bit with Scott again, but it is in the works, don't worry, it is coming, but uh, yeah, bye bye for now, and I'll see you on the next one.